Hello, and welcome to this lesson on describing and constructing scatter plots. Okay, that's going to be our goal, is we want to be able to describe and construct scatter plots. We're starting this unit on uh, data analysis, statistics a little bit. We'll be talking about two different lessons on scatter plots and one lesson on something called a two-way frequency table. All right, so um, in this lesson, well, simply, how do I describe and construct scatter plots? So very straightforward, um, essential question and goal for this lesson. So for a warm up, um, can you list five things you know or think you know about scatter plots? What things you know? What things you think you know? A lot of people will say, well, students go, well, it looks like a bunch of dots, which is true, a scatter plot. Um, a lot of times people think of it as just dot, 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 dot. That is a scatter plot. Um, so it, it's a graph with a bunch of dots. And then there's a variety of other things you may know or think you know about it. And let's see how many of these things turn out to be true. So a scatter plot is a way of displaying bivariate data. Bivariate means two variables. In our case, it's going to be the x variable and the y variable. When both variables are numerical, meaning they both have to be numbers. Um, that's so you can't graph something like, what's your favorite pizza? Well, that can't be a scatter plot because like what your favorite type of pizza is not a number. But if we said, um, how old are you? And what's your shoe size? I could make a scatter plot of your age versus your shoe size. Those are both numbers and we can make a scatter plot from it. The whole point of a scatter plot is we're going to be looking for this thing called a correlation. The correlation is it, it, it's the relationship between the two variables. Is there actually a relationship? And that's the point of a scatter plot is to see the two variables that we're, we're comparing. Are they related? Is there some connection between them? And the possible correlations, connections, and you might also see the word association. Correlation and association are used kind of interchangeably. They're synonyms. So um, possible correlations or associations are a positive, a negative, strong, weak, linear, nonlinear, or no correlation. And a lot of the times when we're talking about these associations and correlations, uh, we'll be looking at our line of best fit, which is a line, a straight line that attempts to model the data represented in the scatter plot. Okay, so those vocab words may not mean a whole lot to you right now, but they will by the end of these next couple lessons. So we're going to start by just describing some scatter plots. So here I have um, a scatter plot. Example A here shows, oops, it shows um, height versus pant size. So these are the two variables that are being measured. We said it's bivariate, two variables, height, pant size. So we can see what happened as you get taller and taller and taller and taller. We can see what happens to your pant size. They're getting bigger and bigger. Okay. So one of the first things we'd like to do is be able to sketch our line of best fit. And here's how I do this, and, and this may not be the best way, um, but it works out fairly well. So I take my data, and I'm going to wrap it up in a burrito. Essentially, I'm going to try to circle the data loosely. There we go. There's a loose circling of the data. Now, I'm going to take that burrito, and I'm going to cut it the way you would never, ever, ever actually cut a burrito. I'm going to cut it down the middle this way. So I'm take I drew a circle around it and then I cut my burrito in half. Now it kind of looks more like a, a hot dog or a maybe a, a pickle with a stick through it. There we go. It's a it's a like a carnival pickle with a stick on it. Things that should happen when you do this. You should have roughly the same number of points above and below the dots. I do. I have, I mean, two above, two below, and three that are actually going through the dots. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect even. It just has to be close. Um, and your line 
should be going kind of the same direction as all the data. In fact, if I would get rid of my burrito now, that line I have here is pretty darn close to the line of best fit for this data. Okay, so this line, and I'm going to put my burrito back for now. This line is the line of best fit. So do you see how it kind of follows the same pattern as the data? It goes in the same direction. It has the same slope. Um, it kind of gives you an idea of where this data is going. And eventually in the next lesson, we're going to use that line of best fit and we're going to like write the equation of the line and be able to answer questions and specific questions about the line. But now that we have that line drawn, we can actually answer some questions about what type of correlation is going on here. So that line has a positive slope. I know because it's going up. See, Positive slopes go up, negative slopes go down. Well, this line has a positive slope and this scatter plot has a positive correlation or association if you like that word too it's positive because it's going up now we're gonna add a little extra on here i'm going to make this a positive up up now what does that mean well that tells me that when my one variable goes up so does the other. A positive correlation, your variables go in the same direction. So as your height gets bigger, as your height goes up, what happens to the size of pants you wear? It also goes up. That's what a positive correlation means. It means both variables, um, they're both either increasing or they're both decreasing. They're going in the same direction. Positive correlations go in the same direction. As one variable goes up, so does the other. I can go on and say that my data looks very linear. If this is seeming familiar from when we were talking about functions, you're right, it does. A lot of these same words apply. We could actually add one extra word in here, but it. it let, let me go to letter B first, and then we'll talk about it. So we're going to move on to letter B. So I'm going to do the same sort of things. I'm going to attempt to take my data and burrito it. Now that doesn't look so much like a burrito as it does, um, I don't know, a potato, but I can still take, I can still see it's kind of stretched out this way here. So I'm going to take my line and I'm going to make my uh, carnival pickle. There it is, looks delicious. I should have roughly the same number of points above and below the line, I do. There's actually even an extra one down here and that's okay. By the way, your line of best fit does not have to go through any points at all. It's a coincidence right here it goes through three and it goes through three. It doesn't have to go through any as long as it follows the same kind of line pattern as the data. If I would delete my burrito, actually I'm looking at this and I think that this line might be a little bit high. If I put my burrito back even, I was looking like this side of the burrito is thicker than this side or, or the cut this side is thicker than that side so I actually I think if I move this line a little bit down more like that now you see how the two sides are even and if I delete my burrito it looks a little bit better it, it seems to be more going through the middle of the data as opposed to before where it was kind of high it was more like oopsie wrong tool the other one was up here and that, that one just looks a little bit too high to me. So that's what the burrito does for us. It allows us to see if our line of best fit is actually going through the middle of the data. All right, so things we know about this one. Well, this line is negative. By the way, this is our line of best fit. This line has a negative slope, and that means it has a negative correlation or association. And a negative correlation is negative up down our variables go in opposite directions as you spend more money as the money you spend goes up what happens to the money in your savings account it goes down as you spend more money you're not able to save as much money that's a negative correlation um the amount you stay awake versus the amount of sleep you get that's a negative correlation. The longer you stay awake, the less sleep you get. That's a negative correlation. 
Okay, this one is also linear. And we can see it, it, it a straight line did a good job matching the pattern. And the last thing that I didn't talk about in the last one that I can bring up now is the the strong and weakness of these. And to do that, I need to put my burrito back. Now, this burrito is a nice, firm burrito. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's, it, it's skinny. Um, it's not going to fall apart very easily. So we would call the first one, letter A, a strong correlation. So it's a positive correlation, a linear correlation, and it's a strong correlation. It's strong because the points kind of hug the center line here pretty closely. Okay, that's a strong burrito. This one, on the other hand, imagine you walked into a place and they give you a burrito that looks like that. Holy cow, that thing's going to fall apart in your hands because it's so uh, big, it's just going to, it's going to collapse. The burrito's the shell is not going to be able to hold it. Well, that's because that is a weak correlation. Okay, that correlation is weak. I'm going to put it weaker and stronger. There's no set definition of what makes something strong versus weak. It's always a comparison. So a, this is a stronger correlation. This is a weaker correlation. And that's because these points aren't hugging the center line as close. They're not as uh, compacted towards the center. They're more spaced out. That is a weaker correlation. And what that means in terms of like the actual math of the problem, it means a strong correlation means that this, this relationship here is true for more people. As you get taller, your pant size goes up for almost everybody. As you spend money, the money that's in your savings account doesn't necessarily go down. For a lot of people, it does, but not necessarily everybody. Okay, so this is a weaker correlation. Letters C and D. Now, letter C, we're going to kind of run into a problem. If I burrito this thing and then cut it. Now, I'm having trouble even identifying where I'd cut this burrito from. Like, like where is it? Where's the oblong thing? I mean, it's kind of, if I do reverse, something like that, maybe? But that line's not doing a great job. I mean, look at the look at the dots. The dots are following a pattern, that, but it's not a straight line pattern. Well, that's because this one is not linear. A curvy line does a better job. So this is a non-linear correlation or association. All right, so this one's non-linear. And I can't really tell you if it's, if it's going up or down now because, well, there's parts of a correlation that are positive and there's parts that are negative. So I can't say the whole thing overall is not positive. The whole thing overall is not a negative correlation. Um, it, 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 it goes up and down. So honestly, the best thing I can say about this one is just it's nonlinear. Oh, I lied. I can say that this is a strong correlation. Look how closely and tightly these dots fit to my line. Now, I mean, I, I try to follow the, the, the trend. Now, there's still some that aren't exactly right on, but this did a pretty good job of fitting right to this kind of curvy pattern. I was not intentionally trying to go and make it connect the dots. I just kind of made a nice smooth line and the dots fit really darn close to it. That's because that's a pretty darn strong correlation. I'm going to leave it strong, not even stronger. That is a strong correlation. Okay. Letter D. Hours of TV watched versus in the age. How old somebody is. Now, if I take my data and I wrap it up in a burrito. We kind of run into the same problem. I'm not quite sure of where to draw my line. Like, is my line a best fit that way? Is it that way? Is it? I mean, it, it it's really hard to tell because this pattern is not kind of stretched out in one direction or another. It's not stretched out this way. 
In fact, this doesn't look much like a burrito at all. If, if I walked into a place and this is the burrito they gave me, um, I'd be confused. This looks more like a, a, a pepperoni pizza or a chocolate chip cookie or a chocolate chip waffle or something. This is not a good burrito because this does not have a pattern. There's no clear line pattern that I could draw here. This correlation here is pretty much non-existent. There is no correlation here. So basically what happened is, if you imagine this, we've got a nice strong pattern. And if that pattern kind of stretches out as the points move further away from the center line, you get something more like that. Well, what happens when this pattern becomes so weak, if these points move so far out, here, playing pretend, bum, 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 and we get enough other points on the outside that our pattern becomes so weak that this, it, 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 it's, there's no correlation at all. It's so weak that there is no pattern. There is no connection between the variables. That's kind of what happened here. This pattern was so weak that we can't even see a pattern anymore. There is no correlation there. And because we say there's no correlation, we're not going to say linear or nonlinear. We're not going to say strong or weak. We're not going to say positive or negative. We're saying there's no relationship. So we can't do any of these other descriptive words. There's nothing going on here. All right, so I've done quite a few now. So let's you try to go ahead and try letters E and F and I'll caution you letter E is a little bit tricky, but it's okay. I want you to do your um, circling, draw, uh, wrap it up in a burrito, draw your line of best fit, and then attempt to describe it. Go ahead and pause the video. Do that now. When you're ready, continue hit play, and we'll go through it together. All right, so letter E. You did, hopefully, you wrapped it up in a burrito. You drew your line of best fit, something like that. And then most of you probably said that this is linear. And you probably said it's not positive or negative because it's really not going up or down unless your line was like slightly up or slightly down. You might have even said it's strong. And this is where the trick comes in. When you're talking about a scatter plot, you only have three options as far as a straight line okay we're talking about linear scatter plots straight lines like this one and this one your three options are it's either going up and it has a positive correlation it's going down it has a negative correlation your only third option is no correlation there's no relationship. If it's not positive and it's not negative, there is no correlation as long as you're talking about a straight line. So that means in this letter E, it actually fits into this pattern. My line is not going up. It is not a positive correlation. It is not going down. It's not a negative correlation. So the only thing we can say is there is no correlation in this data. Because the variables that are being tested is the grade on the test and the time taking a test. Well, here's somebody who finished or who got a low grade and was done like in the middle. We have people who were got the same grade or a much higher grade, but they took the same amount of time. And it's kind of all over the place. Like everybody's done in the same I don't know, 20 minutes of each other. And the grades are all over the place. So we can't really say that if you take longer on a test, you get a better grade. I mean, that would look like boom, 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 boom. Your grade on the test, as your grade on the test goes up, you spent more time taking it. Well, that's not what it shows. And it doesn't show the opposite of that either. It doesn't show that something like that, where uh, the grade on the test, the higher your grade, the less time you spent taking it. It doesn't show that. It shows that everybody took about the same amount of time, but the grades are very, very different. 
So we're going to say this has no correlation. Letter F. You hopefully wrapped it up in a burrito like this. Oops, I got a little, a little bump over here. That's okay. These are estimations anyways. You then cut the burrito like this. That looks pretty decent. You then said that this is a linear correlation. You said that this is a positive correlation. And you might have said strong or weak. And the strong and weak is depending on you. It, it, it's a little bit of an opinion question. That's why we can't just say this is strong or this is weak. There's no set definition. It's how you feel about it. Here, I would say that this is a weaker pattern, a weaker correlation. Because they don't fit exactly I mean, they're, 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 they're more spaced out from the center. If you said stronger, I'm not going to say you're wrong, though, either. It is a little bit of personal preference. Okay. But when you're comparing two scatter plots, you should definitely be able to say that is a stronger correlation than that one. This one is much weaker than that one sort of thing. Okay. It's a comparison more than a line in the sand, more than a, a set definition. Okay. Go ahead and try letters G and H as well. Go ahead and pause the video. Try these two on your own. When you're ready to continue, hit play, and we'll go through them together. All right, so what do we got here? So we have letter G, a straight line does not do a great job. I mean, just looking at it, you can see it, it's, it's a curvy. So why wouldn't we use a curvy line? This is a non-linear correlation. In fact, I'm going to use the word association this time. Just to be different because that word can be thrown around there as well. It is a non-linear association. This one is not going up in some places and down in others. This is only going up. So this is a positive association. And I'm going to say this is a pretty darn strong association because these points fit very closely to the line. And this uh, scatter plot is describing the number of months pregnant a woman is and the weight they have gained. So you would expect as they are more pregnant, as the pregnancy moves along, they're gaining more and more and more weight. At first, like when the baby, like when the mother's not even showing that their belly's not even popping out a little bit, they're not gaining a whole lot of weight. Towards the end, when the baby's really growing fast, those last uh, like month or two, um, the baby's growing a lot, very fast, and so the mother's gaining a lot of weight. And that's kind of what the graph is showing. So it's nonlinear, it's positive, and it's strong. Letter H. It is, I'm going to burrito because I can. And that is a super skinny burrito. This is linear, definitely. It's a linear association. It is a negative, negative up, down. I've been forgetting to do my up, ups, and up, downs. So positive, up, up. As one goes up, the other goes up. Negative correlation. As one goes up, the other goes down. And this is a super strong correlation, association. Because these, all of the points pretty much are almost in a straight exact line. That is a super duper strong correlation. one more of this type. Go ahead, pause the video, try this one on your own, and when you're ready to continue, hit play, and we'll go through it together. All right, so you wrapped it up in a burrito. You drew your line of best fit. You then said, hopefully, this has no correlation. Hopefully you did not say it's linear and it's strong. No, 
This has no correlation because it's not positive. It's not negative. Your only other option is none. This problem has no correlation. Do you really think the number of fingers on your left hand has any change, has any difference on your IQ score? No. Just because, I mean, one, two, three, four, there. Most of these people have five fingers. There's a couple fours in there. And there's a couple sixes in there. So do you think because you have six fingers, it makes you smarter than somebody else? No, it's just a genetic defect when you're born. So same thing with four fingers. Or maybe you lost a finger. Um, that doesn't necessarily make you dumber. If, if you lose a finger, now you're smarter or now you're not as smart. You just have one less finger. Okay, so this has no correlation. It is not positive. It is not negative. It's none. No correlation. All right, so that fits in that same pattern I was showing you before. If it's not positive and it's not negative, there is no correlation. So we've done a bunch of describing scatter plots. The next piece of the puzzle, this kind of gets a little bit monotonous, sorry, but it's part of the lesson is constructing scatter plots. Being able to take a set of data and make your own scatter plot. Okay, so here it says the table below shows the results of a study comparing the age of a car in years and the number of miles the car has driven. Graph the data in the space below. Draw the line of best fit for the data. Okay, so we're going to take that data and we're going to graph it. Now I'm going to zoom out just a teensy bit. There we go. So now we can see the, the data as well as the graph space here. We're going to graph all of these. So this a lot of my students get confused on why we have like two different tables well, because it would be too big to fit this whole thing like one big thing across the screen. So by breaking it down into two smaller tables, you'll notice it's still age and miles, age and miles. So it's really just one set of data just broken down into two smaller tables. All right. So when you are plotting, I recommend making your marker a little bigger. Give me a test dot. Eh, a little bigger than that yet. We don't need super, super, super big dots, but it should be I mean, a, a little bit bigger. Um, and these are estimations. So when I'm going to plot the point to 15,000, to 15,000, should be right about there. Right about there. I don't care if it's a little too high or a little too low. It should be close. Each of these points, when we graph all of them, as long as all of your points are really close, we're going to have a good graph. Um, so this 5 and 66,000. So 5 years is here. 66,000 is, well, here's 60, here's 70. So it's going to be between 60 and 70. Oop, that was a little high. I could fix. There, close enough. Uh, yeah, that might be 68. Uh, whatever. It's fine. Okay. 3 and 20. Dot. 1 and 7. Dot. 8 and 80. Dot. 2 and 19. Dot. 3 and 25. Dot. 5 and 90. 5 and 90 is there. 6 and 55 is there, 2 and 22 is there, 7 and 75 is there. So there's my data. Notice I didn't take too long doing this. These were all estimations. Um, just get it close. Now, if I go to wrap up this burrito, You see a problem with my burrito? I got this lump hanging off the side here. If I could exclude that lump, if I could exclude that one point, look how absolutely beautiful my burrito would be. So this dot right here is called an outlier. In fact, that's what that says down here. Highlight and label any gaps, clusters, and outliers. Well, this is an outlier. An outlier is when you have one point that lies 
far outside the rest of your data. So he doesn't really fit in. If I had to include him in my burrito, I would have this big extra lump hanging off the side. If I could exclude him, my data looks so much better. That's what an outlier is. Okay, He lies outside the normal data. You should not have tons of outliers. You should only have a small number of outliers for your data set. All right, let's change to purple, 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 purple. All right. The next thing, so outliers, any gaps. A gap in my data would be when there's like a hole, like right here, there's a gap in my data. So I have a bunch of data here, I have a big hole in the middle and a bunch of data up here. So that is the gap in my data, okay? It's kind of a hole where there's, there's you're missing data. So I have a gap, I have an outlier, and I do have a little bit of a cluster. My cluster, why do I use blue? Um, green. My cluster is right down here. So a cluster is probably what you think it is. It, the word cluster means a group of things kind of packed together. Well, that's what that is. Okay, so I have a cluster of data where I have a bunch of points, I mean, probably more like these three. These two probably don't really fit in as much. Can I erase? Yes. So those three kind of make a little bit of a cluster. It's we have a, it, it should look kind of like, like a shotgun blast. There's like a whole bunch of dots in one small area. Okay. It should not be spaced out like this. They should be kind of packed together. That's what makes something a cluster. And I did not draw my line of best fit yet from when I started. So my line of best fit is there. Okay, so I've completed part A. I draw the line of best fit for the data. I graph the data in the space provided. I have all that. I then labeled, highlighted and labeled my gaps, my clusters, and my outliers. Okay, we're making progress. Next, we need to describe the type of correlation that is present in the data. So describe the type of correlation. So what's going on with this line of best fit? My line of best fit is positive. So there's a positive correlation. It is a linear correlation. It's a straight line. And I'd say, except for that one outlier, it's a stronger correlation. It's not super duper strong, but it's relatively strong. I mean, all my dots are fitting fairly closely to the line. It's a fairly skinny, strong burrito. I like all those things. So it's a positive, linear, strong correlation. Letter B. The table below shows the results from multiple surveys trying to find a link between years in school and time spent in jail. Graph the data in the space below. This is actual data, not fictional. So when I came up with this set of data, I actually did research and, and I mean, this was quite a few years ago. So this, the data has probably changed by now. Um, but there, this was the probability of somebody going to jail based off of the amount of time they spent in school, the years they spent in school. Okay. Now the actual data had lots and lots of data points, hundreds, thousands. Obviously I couldn't pick all of those. So I kind of cherry picked a couple um, data points that fit the same pattern and trend as the actual data. Okay. So it's actual data, but it is, uh, I shrunk it down. I, it's kind of like a summary of the data. So here's what I want you to do. Well, I'm going to start you on this process a little bit, and then I'm going to have you pick up and finish. So to graph this, so I have my, my data broken down into two smaller tables, like the previous problem. But if you notice my graph down here now, I wasn't quite as nice. I didn't give you all your labels and your scales and everything else on your scatter plot. We just have a, a blank graph. And we've got to figure out how to make the scatter plot. So things to know when you're looking at a table, your first variable is always the X variable, the independent variable, they would call it in science class. The second variable is always the Y variable, that is the 
dependent variables. So the probability of you going to jail depends on the years you spend in school. Independent, dependent. X always comes before Y. That means on my graph, my years in school, and that's getting a little tiny. Sorry, I'm just trying to get everything on the same screen. My years in school goes on my X axis. So I'm going to put school down here. And then my Y variable, the Y variable is the probability of going to jail. I'm going to summarize and just say jail. Scale, numbers. The origin is always zero. So my school number, how high do I have to go in the school number? 16 appears to be my biggest. So I've got to count up to 16. So clearly counting by ones is not going to work. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Hmm. Okay, then I would count by twos. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 will work. That gets my highest value over here. Probability of going to jail. My largest number is 1.6%. So counting by ones would be a little weird. Going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because then 1.6% would only be this big. So my entire graph would be just from here to here. That's a super tiny little graph. We like if our graphs fill up most of the space we have. So I'm going to count by 0.2. Watch how this works. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Kind of like we did on the x-axis. <coughs> But now I'm going to add in a decimal point. Instead of that being 20, it's 2.0, 1.6, 1.2, 0.8, 0.4. .0 .0 and now I can graph my data. So here's what I want you to do. I would like you to pause the video. I would like you to graph the data in the space provided. And then um, see if you can highlight any gaps clusters, outliers, draw your line of best fit all oh, and we'll get to the other stuff. So do that what you see on the screen, graph your data, highlight and label any gaps, clusters, outliers, pause the video, do it now. When you're ready to continue hit play, we'll go through it together. Alright, so I'm gonna get caught up. So eight and 1.4. Let me make my dot a little bigger. 12 and 0 0.6, that's a little high, that's okay. 2 and 1.6, boom. 6 and 1.5, boom. 16 and 0 0.4, 3 and 1.5, uh, 10 and 1.2, 9 and 1.4, 5 and 1.5, 13 and 1, 0 0.5, 15 and 0 0.3. Okay, so I have all my data here now. So I'm going to change color here. I'm going to change my marker size again. Now we can do things like we could wrap this up in a burrito. That was not very good. Let me try it again. Try again. There we go. And I could draw a line of best fit, cut my data in half, something like that. Now you see the straight line doesn't necessarily do a great job. It's close. It seems like a curvy would probably, ooh, a curvy would probably be a little better. Maybe not quite that curvy, but it kind of does something more like that. See, that looks better, doesn't it? Um, but there are times where even an approximation, even the straight line we have, it does a decent job. Even if it's not the best situation, it can still do a pretty good job. That's not horrible. It's not horrible. It's okay. 
So it asks us to find any gaps, clusters, or outliers. So here we go. We have a gap right about here. There's this kind of hole in the data. It's not a big gap, but there's definitely a gap there. Cluster? I don't think there are any clusters. I don't see where there's a whole bunch of points. Like two dots together does not make a cluster. A cluster would be a large group. I don't see any clusters here. Outliers? There are none. There's no, there's not a single point here <coughs> that's far away from the rest of the data. There are no outliers. Down here, we have a little uh, story here. It says, uh, James believes there's no way going to school has any correlation with going to prison. Is he correct? What type of correlation is there? So is this a no correlation as James believes? He believes there's no way there's gonna be a correlation. What do you think? Put down the type of correlation you believe there is in this data. Okay, so James is wrong. There is a correlation. We can see it. There is a pattern. There is a trend. Sometimes the line of best fit is called a trend line. There is a trend in the data. That trend is linear, at least pretty linear. It might be a little curvy, but it's pretty linear. Um, it is negative negative up down meaning as you spend more time in school your probability of going to jail goes down and it's pretty strong i mean it's fairly strong the dots fit fairly close to the line so is he correct no there is definitely a connection going on here if there was no connection it would look more like a scattered um scatter a bunch of points, random points with no clear pattern, or there'd be, it wouldn't be a positive or negative, it'd be a straight up and down line or a straight vertical line, but that's not what it shows here. All right, I think this is the last one. Yeah, it is, good. All right, last question here. It says, Damien did a survey of 20 drivers that came into the DMV to renew their driver's license. Damien was interested to see if a person's age had any effect on how well they could read road signs. Use the data collected to construct a scatter plot. Draw the line of best fit for the data. So, construct a scatter plot, verb. Draw the line of best fit. Two things you gotta do make a scatter plot, draw a line of best fit. Okay. I would like you to pause the video and I would like you to try to put in your labels on the X and the Y axis as well as your scale. What numbers do you believe would work best? We worked through it together last time. I'd like you to work through it solo this time. Pause the video. Do that part. Don't even graph the points yet. Just do your labels and your stuff on the X and the Y axis and then we'll come back together. Check it and then we'll plot our points. All right, so you definitely should have had your age on the X axis and your sign legibility distance on the Y. So I'm gonna put age down here and legibility is a fancy word for readability. I'm gonna put readability. I also, I, I guess I could have wrote, writ, written the word distance, whatever. All right, scale, well, it, Zero is always the origin. And what should my scale be? How high do I have to count up to in age? My highest age, 75, 85, 85, 85, 85. Highest is 85. Now, if I've got 10 lines counting by tens, does a pretty good job. That gets me up to 100 right there. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That puts 85 right here. That's pretty good. That uses up most of our space. Sign legibility distance. How far do we have to go? How high do we have to go? I see a 600. Do you see anything bigger? 600, 600, 600. Du, 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 du. Nope. So 
This gets a little hard for some students, figuring out what to count by on their scale. Counting by ones obviously won't work. We need to get to 600 and this only goes up to 10. So do you count by tens? 10, 20, 30, 40, that only gets us up to 100. Do you count by 20s? That gets you to 200. Do you count by 25s? That gets you to 250. Do you count by 50s? Counting by 50s only gets you up to 500. We need to get to 600. You could technically count by 60s, but that's weird. Nobody counts by 60s. Most people, your scales, we count by the same denominations as types of money we have. We have ones, fives, tens, 25s, 50s, hundreds. Those are the sorts of things you should try to count by um, because it's easy to count by those things. When you learn to count, you count, you learn to count by ones, fives, tens, twenties, 25s even 50s hundreds so if all those other th other things don't work counting by hundreds is probably our best bet here 0 100 200 300 400 500 600 that was an ugly six that was an ugly four too you know what let's do it right 400 600 700 800 900 1000 now we've got ourselves a scale. I am not saying you have to count by 100s here. I'm saying that's probably in the, the, the space we have provided the best scale to use. Possibly. Could you have counted by 60s? Sure. It just gets a little wonky. I mean, 60, 120, uh, 180, 240, 300, and then you you keep going, you get up to 600. It would work, okay? If you had a bigger graph space, if you're using something, a plain piece of graph paper, I would probably count by something other than hundreds. I'd try to count by fifties and just make my graph a little bit taller would be better. All right, so now we have all this done. I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to actually graph your data in the space provided. So go ahead and graph your data right now, please. All right, I'm gonna get caught up because, well, I need to. So we've got 16 and 600, boom, 55 and 430. Notice I'm not gonna to take too much time on these. I'm, I'm going quick because I've got a lot of points to do. 49, 400, 23, 500, 75, 250. 51, 410, uh, 22, 580, 35, 410, 85, 400, 67, 240, 48, 500, 18, 540, 65, 350, 72, 410, 68, 370. So those dots were, those two dots I just did are very close together. Um, 35, 430, that's also pretty darn close. 75, 330, 25, 520, 500, yeah, something like that. 66, 340, there's another one. 64, 390. All right, so there we go. That's some rough looking data, but we got it. So yours should look somewhat similar to mine. Again, it's an estimation. We're trying to go quick. We've got lots of data, but all of our points should be roughly close. It should follow the same trend pattern. The dots should be about in these right locations. All right. So describe the type of correlation that is represented by the data. Do it. It is linear. We never did draw our line of best fit. Let me do that quick. Burrito, burrito, gonna make a burrito. All right, there's my burrito. That is linear. 
It is negative. It is strong, weak, uh, I don't know. That one's, it's kind of in the middle to me. Um, the, the points follow a nice clear pattern. Uh, I'm going to go stronger. I don't, I'm kind of in the middle here. So if you said weaker, I'm okay with that too. It, 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 it is rough. It's in the middle. What conclusions can you draw from the results of this survey? Meaning, what can we learn about a person's age and their ability to read road signs? by looking at the data. Well, as your age goes up, what happens to the distance you can read road signs? Whoa. What happens to the distance you can read road signs? Well, it goes down because that's what a negative correlation means. As one variable goes up, the other variable goes down. Now all we need to do is say that in words. You would just say, like in words, and I'm not going to write this because you don't need to see me write a sentence or two. But you'd write like, um, as your age goes up, or as you get older in age, whatever, the uh, distance you can read road signs goes down. That's what you'd say. That's what this would mean in words, like actually writing out a conclusion. As your age increases, the ability to read road signs goes down, or you need to be closer to read the road signs. Something like that. Summary. Why do you think drawing a line of best fit would be useful when trying to make predictions based off a scatter plot? Why do you think that line would be helpful? Take a guess, put down an answer, and then we'll go through it and check it together. Well, the line really does come in handy when you have something like this. Imagine I just gave you that scatter plot right there, and I said, well, um, on average, how far can somebody who's 58 years old read the road sign? You look at this, you go, I don't know, it's somewhere in here. There's a 58 year old. But, oopsie, if I gave you your line of best fit back, we can actually use that and go, oh, a 58 year old would be able to read road signs at 390 feet. Like, we can actually use that to make good, honest number predictions where without it, we're, we're kind of just taking a shot in the dark saying, oh, it's in this ballpark here somewhere. Okay, so it's useful um, for actually making good number predictions rather than just a very rough estimate. Okay, thank you so much for watching this lesson on scatter plots. Until next time, toodles.